Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nintendo Enthusiast Radio. I'm Dakota, here with my co-hosts, Anthony and Eli. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good as well. Word. So, here on a beautiful Saturday, it was really nice out today, but I played a lot of Pokemon Battle Troze, which came out recently on the 3DS. And I know, Eli, you played a little bit of it. I reviewed it recently for Nintendo Enthusiast. Um, it's a recent Pokemon game. What do you guys think about it? Uh, is it it's a is it a sequel? It is actually yeah. The original came That's out on the thought. DS yeah. And was the original uh, was that received well? I can't even remember. I don't recall great uh, things being said. But... Honest, I mean I liked the game. I thought it was a good like a lot of fun. I didn't really listen to reviews on that one, but I thought it was. Hmm. I think it improved on a game that was already really good. I'm really interested in the new one. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Yeah. Um... Uh, talking about this older version, I never actually played the original either to a great extent at all. So before we start off, I wanted to ask Dakota um, how the like amount of content with the one on DS compares with the one on 3DS. Because obviously the one on DS was a full retail game, costed some like 30 bucks, whereas this one's just $8. So um, that might have been the reason why there wasn't so much you know, mass appeal to this game because it was thirty dollars as opposed to the eight dollar price that it has now. Now, I would definitely so, uh, say that its price tag is makes it a much more appealing because it actually has more content than the original, and they've changed how the game fundamentally works to make it have more replay value. Uh, like for example, in the campaign, the levels instead of being based on like how many Pokemon you need to clear, like oh you have to clear three hundred Pokemon in this level. Instead, it's you know unlimited. You continue to play over and over to see like the highest score you can get on a stage. And that unlocks new stuff, and that makes you go back and play more, whereas in the original I found myself just sort of going through the game, not really trying to maximize it, because even if I do score a lot, I won't get anything extra, I'll still advance, I'll still win, so, uh, excuse me, uh, nose is mad stuffy, but, uh, you know, ultimately I think, I mean, I'm not even very far in the game because I've been trying to get, you know, an S rank on every single stage, because, you know, that opens up the more opportunities to get, or catch new Pokemon, and, and uh, and get a higher score and all that kind of stuff. So I think how they've changed the game and what they priced it as has made a really great deal. Does yeah. it have every Pokemon? Like, does it represent every Pokemon? Or it has just a like, lot. I'm not sure if it's everyone, but it has a lot of them. Oh, cool. It definitely doesn't have all of them, but I think just trying to think, there's ten different zones. Each zone has um, five stages. Each or uh, Six like stages, four. I believe. Oh yeah, six stages. Each stage has like five Pokemon, so I guess that comes out to around three or four hundred Pokemon. Um, so not all of them, but there's definitely a lot of them. Um, but yeah, what do you think about the game? You know, I really enjoyed it. I really liked playing through the game. Uh, definitely a really good time waster, I guess. I I don't know how else to categorize it because it seems a lot like an iOS game, really. Um, but it's just a lot of fun to play, and it's one of those things where you pick it up. And a lot of handheld games, you can't really play for long periods of time um, because you may feel like it's dragging on because just the way that the game is designed. Um, obviously, with some of Nintendo's offerings, that's not necessarily the case. Um, and that includes Pokemon Battle Troze because what I found is that I could play for hours on end and not get bored because I was just so you know into the experience, I guess, of just... Trozaying, I guess, is if that's the word for. Yeah, for I don't it. know what Troze means. <laughs> um, yeah, but just matching up all these Pokemon together and creating common combos and racking up the high score. Um, Dakota, you mentioned that you're going for S's on uh, S rank on most of the stages. I mean, I only have S rank on like two or three of the stages. Um, I got through the game, just went through it, and it still took me, I think, eight to ten hours. And I mean, I, I replayed some stages here and there. Um, but overall, it's a pretty meaty game for an $8 downloadable title. Uh, I feel like you could, if you're not trying to optimize, you could definitely get through it a little, you know, pretty quickly. It's not too hard, I think, because you can get away with you know easy combos to complete it. I think it's when you really want to go to optimize your high scores and that kind of stuff is where you find the game getting really lengthy. And that's when you want to unlock all the hidden Pokemon that you have. you can only catch if you get enough points or something like that, whatever the criteria is. Um, I think that's where the game gets really long, rather than just being long in general. Because ultimately, like, I, you know, you can play through the game and, and beat it pretty quickly. I, I wouldn't say it takes too long, but 
Um, I don't think that's where you find its replay value. Its replay value is like going back over and over, like, oh, I can do better. I knew I, you know, I could get a bunch better combo here, or whatever. And then the game overall is more complex now that you have, you know, tight matchups, which allow you to get more points and and um, and all and like triple battles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, and the other thing is that the game um, gives you such a rush when you start clearing out Troze boxes. So the way the game works, essentially, is it's a little bit like Bejeweled, except it's not, because you're allowed to swap Pokemon across the board. It's not just ones that are next to each other in order to chain three or more together. Um, essentially, after chaining enough together or chain, chaining long combinations like five in a row together, um, it's going to move into this special mode where you only need two in a row in order to chain. and once you get this co- this uh, little combination going, then you'll be able to clear out whole boxes of Pokemon. And you get this sort of amazing rush going through multiple boxes at a time. You keep on going. Um, I almost feel like a uh, psychic seeing in the, into the future where I can move these Pokemon in order to, to make matchups. And it gives you this rush that's so good. Uh I don't know, Dakota, if you felt the same thing. but I would definitely say that it feels like an endurance kind of game to me because I'm kind of trying to see how many boxes, uh, Troze boxes I can clear, you know, over and over and over again. Uh, I feel like the game just it really challenges you to think ahead and think, oh, you know, how can I... It, 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 I guess thinking ahead and also your reflexes too because you have to be very accurate in the game. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, people who have a lot of technical skill will shine. That's why they'll, that's why they'll like the game. That's why I like the game. Because if you do like practice a lot, you'll get really good at it, and you'll get you know a lot of points. It's very rewarding because you know the game does get harder as you go on. You know, keeping a combo going isn't as you know easy as it looks. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things where it takes a good amount of practice to master. And I remember going back to my initial stages um, after beating the game, and you end up getting so much of a higher score because you're just so uh, used to matching up these. Pokemon Rose, and yeah. Yeah, I would oh. definitely say compared to the original, um, you know, which was a fully retail game and was less complex and, you know, had a different kind of movement to the board, you know, Troze pretty much improves on everything and more and costs so much less. I really, for a digital game on the eShop, I think it's one of the best offerings, in my opinion. I th- I, like it's, it feels more of like its own game. The original sort of felt like a Pokemon Ranger knockoff, like with like its weird style and like story. This one feels like a kind of its own unique kind of game now. I really enjoy that they went back and, and gave the game sort of like a really like needed polish and improvement. Uh, and for $8, I was definitely in. There was no way I was going to miss out on it. Yeah, it's the price that's really attracting me. And it's one of those things, Anthony, as I said before, where you'll be able to come back to it and play it again and again and again, and you're mm-hmm. really not going to get bored of it. And even if you're sitting on the train or wherever, um, it's definitely going to be very convenient to play and really fun to play. So I, I definitely recommend at least considering picking it up. Or I don't know if there's a demo. I don't think there is. But if there was a demo, I'd say download that at least to try it out. But, um, yeah, I think that'll conclude our Pokemon Troze chat. Make sure to let us know your thoughts on the game in the comment section below and head over to NintendoEnthusiast.com for Dakota's review. Where uh, Dakota, you want to spoil a little bit of your review before we sign off? 